welcome to you for this presentation on drip irrigation that is part of micro irrigation. Micro irrigation means drip irrigation and filter irrigation system. See, these are the, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, this irrigation means these are the modern irrigation technology, this irrigation and filter irrigation. Before we go to the details of this drip uh, irrigation, we would like to share with you the available water on the earth. See, the total quantity of available water is 1400 billion cubic kilometers, out of which 1,360 kilometers is salt water in the sea. And surface water is only 40,000, 40 million cubic kilometers. Out of this area, the ice caps and polar areas consist of 30 million cubic kilometers, and groundwater consists of 6 million cubic kilometers, and that is not accessible by the human being. And water available for human usage, including rainwater, river water, groundwater, etc., it is hardly. 4 million cubic kilometers, that is less than half a percent of the total water available on the earth. So we have the total cultivable area of 172 million hectares. Out of which 65 million hectares is under irrigation and utilizable water is 105 million hectares and sufficient for irrigating 55 percent of the cultivable area. Remaining water has to depend on natural rainfall. See, the traditional method of irrigation is flood method and then basin irrigation system that is for the plantation crop and furrow irrigation for the furrow crop. See, the modern irrigation systems are the drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation. In drip irrigation, we have online drip system and inline drip system. In sprinkler irrigation, we start with micro sprinkler, mini sprinkler, micro jet, and large volume sprinkler, mixer, and progress like this. This is micro irrigation, the efficiency of irrigation increases. The efficient technology of covering required quantity of water directly to the root zone of the tank through network of pipeline. That is drip irrigation. So this is a recent technology. It's about since 20, 25 years it has been uh, adopted, being adopted in the country. So the advantages of uh, this drip irrigation is saving water to the extent of 30 to 80 percent depending on the spacing of the plant and very labor because only one person can manage up to 10 to 15 hectares of land without any problem because the entire thing, uh, pipe network, piping network will be there. He has to operate only the wall. Then saving fertilizer because now this is a new concept, soluble fertilizer and liquid fertilizers are available. When we apply granulated fertilizer, hardly 30 to 40 percent of the fertilizer is utilized by the plant, whereas the remaining 60 to 70 percent is going as the operation loss and which goes deep into below the root zone, there is a base. Whereas in the two drip irrigation system, the fertilizer is supplied in the soluble uh, uh, solid uh, <coughs> liquid uh, form, which goes along with the water and the water is applied only up to the root zone and 90% of the fertilizers are replaced by the plant. That means we have quite a lot of fertilizers which are very expensive nowadays. And energy saving because in, it is, uh, in India most of the states they give <coughs> free uh, energy to the farmer and it is estimated that 40% of the energy generated is used by agricultural sector. See, when we pump the water and allow it to flow to the field, so we uh, waste a lot of water. And uh, 
for pumping that we need energy also. When we apply water through the irrigation system, we save water. As I told, between 30 to 80 percent water we are saving, and to that extent we proportionately we save energy also. Then, this is in the case of drip irrigation, we apply water at the right quantity, at the right place, at the right time. So this increases the energy of the productivity of the uh, agriculture because always the soil moisture is maintained at optimum level and the load of the plant will be continuous and we get higher yield, good quality and better uh, price. So improved quality uh, of the produce and utilization of marginal soil. Even if soils are bad, which are not suitable for irrigated cultivation through other methods, through drip irrigation, such soils can be uh, made use of. Uniform distribution of water, because in all the source of fields, the water distribution will be uniform <coughs> without any, uh, even if the lands are undulated, because the uh, discharge of water is controlled in the filter. Suitable for uneven land also. Because, uh, because of this uh, complete, uh, pressure compressed river. So, I have already told the benefits of uh, saving in water and electricity between 30 to 70 percent, increased area under irrigation. If you save the water, you can increase the irrigation, uh, irrigated area between 2 to 4 times depending on the soil and the crop. Saving labor because only 1 person will be able to uh, operate the system. And the other advantage is wherever there is no moisture, there is no weed growth. So there is less weed growth, less manpower for weeding also, and uh, <coughs> irrigation of so, uh, only one person can take care of. Because of uh, this, uh, <coughs> all these uh, systems, the yield and the quality of the produce increases, and uh, sometimes the yield is two to three times. Sometimes it is 30 percent increase, 40 percent increase, depending on what practices we uh, adopt in the cultivation. So, a reduction in weed population, fertilizer pesticides can be spread and uh, that will be saved. Can be installed in problem pesticides as I have been told, and uh, terrain suitable for green water. And any time of the day, it can be irrigated because night time, the irrigation is uh, difficult in the field because of. Uh, <coughs> uh, there won't be light, further there may be snakes and other things. So people definitely there will light to irrigate during the night. But nowadays the governments are providing power during night time. So at that time to irrigating through drip irrigation because just the open the wall when it opens the wall. So and uh, then the duration of at least three to four hours per each block. So that uh, even during night time we can irrigate. And low quality quality of water also can be used because uh, <coughs> the saline, uh, saline water is also uh, suitable for drip irrigation. It can be used. So the, there are various components of drip irrigation, starting from the control head, that is from water source, the filter, and the application of the sand can be there, and uh, <coughs> filtration. So then there will be main lines uh, this, so carrying water from the water source through the filter to the field. Then there will be sub drains that is connect depending on the water available. So the field is divided into various segments and each segment will be irrigated at a time. Because if you don't have sufficient water to irrigate the entire land in one side, then uh, we have to do in stages. That's why we make this submain, and each submain wall will be opened and that will be irrigated depending on the requirement of the plant, water requirement of the plant. It will be operated for one hour, half an hour, two hours, three hours, depending on the crop. Then there will be lateral lines which carry the water from the main, uh, main submain to the uh, uh, row of the plant. Then there will be limiters. Uh, Interpart of different discharges starting from 2 LPH, 4 LPH, 8 LPH, 16 LPH, 
then other walls, uh, adopters, connectors, etc. etc. So this is a typical layout of the uh, system starting from uh, pump, then there is pressure regulator at the bottom left bottom, then there is a pressure regulator, then there is a nutrient tank, that is a fertilizer tank, then filter will be there, from there it is taken to the main line, then there is submain and the lateral and the for each lateral on each lateral there are two or three tanks we have shown in the diagram. So then uh, there will be three, four millimeters for each tank depending on the root area. If the root area is wider, we provide more number of drippers. Uh, if the root area is uh, less, then we provide less number of drippers. So the irrigation, you know, the motto is this manufacturing unit started in 1992. This is about our company and we have GIS license for irrigation labs uh, since 1998 and GIS license for filter in 2001. Our start, we started our irrigation model in engineering components as well as diversification and we started export in 2006. We have GIS license for everything five in 2011 and we are ESO 9001 uh, 2008 certified company uh, in January 2013 from CBE and all of you. See, we are operating in the states of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Maharashtra, Orissa and Rajasthan and this year we, are, uh, we have started our operations in the distribution We have we are operating through our dealer network. So we have a very good party for We have been approved by uh, various state government departments to supply distributed system to the farmers and uh, under central and state government subsidy scheme in wherever we are operating. See our product range includes with the drip laterals, solenum and 15 mm with the marking and 20 mm we are going to get ISI market. Then we have integrated drip lines for 12 mm and 15 mm and 20 mm, 1, 2, 4 LPH non pc drippers. And we are also supplying pressure compensating drippers. This is starting from 15 centimeter to 100 centimeter with ISI market. And this is technology of group splitting also. Suppose uh, they want to irrigate one plant of uh, say six feet apart and uh, it is only one or two emitters. So we can give two emitters and then we four four feet uh, landscape and then we another two report. That is group spacing uh, is also possible and we have installed such a field for various crops whereby we can save a lot of water. See this uh, uh, this online research with four LPH and eight LPH and now we have introduced 14 LPH also because in most of the places the power uh, is a problem. They get hardly one or two hours power. So they want to irrigate faster. So in such cases we give higher discharge uh, creepers. So we have just started manufacturing 14 LPH creeper also. See we, uh, in drip irrigation the water has to be filtered so that there is no clogging in the dripper. So for that we have three filters with metal and uh, screen filter with plastic and disc filter and then uh, plastic hydrocycline filter tank filter. So these are the uh, range of filters we have. In the drip laterals we have 6 mm solenum uh, lateral fitting. So 6 mm solenum, 15 mm and 20 mm then venturi uh, assembly that is for feeding uh, fertilizer. 14, 1 in and 2 that is venture uh, assembly wherever there is substantial pressure in the pump rate. where there is uh, pressure is very there which cannot create that uh, pressure difference but like the tanks are used to apply fertilization then we have fertilization pumps where it will be uh, used in a really triangle so we have uh, micro filters and uh, mixture, traded, microfilter, mini filter, and active filter. 
and we also have landscape irrigation then distributed for rain by we have wide range of pop up sprinklers are available so insulator for electric transport is also important the our motto is to provide the best quality irrigation system and service to the farmer through our strong and dedicated dealership network as the most competitive type we have been one of the we have we are both we are operating in small scale sector we have been <coughs> we have a very high reputation in the market as well as in the global sector as a, a ethical company and quality conscious manufacturer the apart from manufacturing supply of drip uh, irrigation system we are also also associated with the various state and central government Departments and team. For example, I was the president of Irrigation Association of India. That is an organization of all the sprinkler and drip manufacturers in the country, numbering about 200. So I was the president, first president from the small scale sector. During that period, that is between 2002 and 5, Government of India constituted. National Task Force on Micro Irrigation, headed by Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu, who is then Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, and I was I had the privilege of representing the industry in the committee, which formulated the subsidy scheme to be implemented during 11th to 12th plan period, that is, uh, 10 years period, which is uh, now being implemented to the country. as president of india the president of uh, irrigation association <coughs> i was uh, uh, represented the i represented the industry in the government of india uh, national cost cost committee which what uh, <coughs> of the uh, costing of micro irrigation system for various places and system i am also the president of micro irrigation society of india This is a technical body, and which uh, takes up training programs for dealers, manufacturers, and uh, government officials. So I was, I had the privilege of uh, representing the industry in the mini mission on efficient use of water resources in Karnataka, constituted by the government of Karnataka. So wherein uh, we studied the water resources available in the state and how best. it can be utilized uh, to save the uh, to conserve the earth resources i was also i am also member of the state level micro irrigation committee which meets once in a quarter and uh, formulates the scheme for implementation in the state and uh, <coughs> i am also member of the technical committee of government of karnataka which conducts regular training program for the and officers who are implementing this micro irrigation Uh, especially on the quality aspects, I uh, that is my specialization in that uh, committee, and we also train the dealers because at least uh, once in a year, if we train them, they will know the latest technology and they will be able to do better service to the farm. So these uh, things I have taken on a voluntary basis, and I have the privilege of uh, privilege of recognition from the government of Karnataka as well as government. India, and uh, as far as our capacity is concerned, so far in the last uh, 10 to 12 years, we have covered about 75,000 hectares under drip irrigation for various crops, right from uh, horticulture, various say coconut, various based crops like coconut, chikku, and other uh, mangoes and other things, to global based crops like vegetables and sugar cane, cotton, and other things. So today we have a capacity to cover about 12,000 hectares per annum. Capacity, and we are going. We are happy that we are going steadily. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I will welcome. I will try to answer. Okay. Uh, thank you for the talk, Mr. Hosinger. The audience, you can start your questions. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Ranganath is asking. 
Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mutunja, can you okay? Yeah. Can you oh, mute please, your uh, one one second? Can you mute your uh, this one mic? Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, I'm uh, I'm able to hear my own voice. Can you mute that? See, the cost uh, depends on the spacing of the plant. See, for example, coconuts are spaced between 25 to 30 feet apart. See, here the cost, uh, material requirement will be uh, fairly less. So the cost per acre may vary between 10 to 12 thousand. If you go for medium spaced crops like say banana or uh, this one, <coughs> so, papaya and other things, where the spacing is about uh, 6 to 7 feet apart, so there the cost will be about 25 to 30 thousand rupees per acre. And if you go for vegetables, which uh, between row to row, it is hardly 18 inches to 2 feet. And uh, there will be plant every 6 inches or 9 inches or 8 inches. So is, they are called row crops, like vegetable, sugar cane and other things. The cost per acre will be around 40 to 45 to 50 thousand rupees, depending on the trade condition. Because here, each system is designed uh, based on the local conditions like uh, size and shape of the land, topography, soil condition, soil type, then uh, hot available and duration of power available. So depending on that, we have to design each system, whether it is one acre or whether it is 100 acre. So the cost differs, uh, even for the same spacing, the cost differs from plot to plot depending on the parameters. Okay. And another question. What are the types of irrigation systems? Yeah. See, under modern irrigation systems, like uh, what I told, this uh, drip irrigation is there, winter irrigation is there, mist irrigation is there, power irrigation is there. So these are the modern irrigation uh, systems. So, they, uh, for example, in greenhouses, we go for combination of both mixtures as well as drip irrigation. So drip irrigation will be wetting the soil and covering water to the uh, covering water to the uh, plants. Whereas the mixtures will be uh, overhead, installed overhead. They will be creating the uh, humidity inside the greenhouse so that the plants will uh, be healthy and they grow better. So that is a mistigation system. Of course, in the uh, open, uh, open cultivation, we have online drip system where uh, normally we use it for widely spaced crop. We draw the lateral line and we provide dripper for each plant depending on the root area, the number of plant uh, dripper and for root crop, we use dripper to use integrated drip line that is built-in drip line. The dripper will be inserted into the pipe at the time of manufacturing at a three different spacing, maybe 20 cm of water, 30 cm of water, 50 cm of water, 40. As per the requirement of individual customers, these spacing will be uh, manufactured. That we can do as per the farmer's requirement. Okay. <laughs> Audience, please continue with your question. Ranganathan, okay. Here we have uh, one question. How to select a drip, uh, how to select a, uh, select a irrigation system? Yeah, selection of irrigation system depends on two or three parameters. First is the crop. So which crop you want to irrigate? Suppose you want to irrigate paddy. Definitely I don't recommend drip irrigation because it needs more water. Though even paddy can be irrigated by drip with 30% of the normal water required. But 
you will get the optimum benefit of the investment because there is no point in investing a uh, 60 70000 rupees for irrigating the paddy whereas the returns are very less suppose the same 60 or 70000 invest for commercial crop or horticultural crop we can get more return so depending on the crop first thing is uh, what is the crop you want to use then what is the type of soil so then what is the irrigation require, water requirement of each plant so depending on that so and the uh, crop geometry so it is depending on that we have a uh, drip irrigation system even in drip irrigation whether it is online or in line or if it is say a uh, field crop like uh, <coughs> uh, uh, wheat or ragi or something like that. I would recommend filter irrigation system because that is more economical yes, though irrigation efficiency filter irrigation is about 60 to 65 percent and drip irrigation is about 90 to 95 percent I recommend future irrigation for such crops like uh, RG, wheat and other things because of the you know, cost involved in insulation. Because future irrigation can be installed at a cost of about uh, 10 to 12,000 rupees per acre, whereas this irrigation for such crops will be about 40 to 50,000. That's why it is not economical to use this irrigation for such crops. But definitely for vegetables, though they are uh, <coughs> closely spaced, the cost is more, the return from vegetables is much more compared to, for example, tomato cultivator, tomato farmers, they definitely go for drip irrigation because over the year they will be growing tomato by rotation from one plot to the other and they at least one during one season they get very good uh, rate and uh, they need money. Regarding this uh, it is available for all farmers. Each farmer is eligible to get subsidy up to uh, 12.5 acres or 5 hectares. That is the norm fixed by central and state governments. So the rate of subsidy right now in Karnataka it is 80 percent up to 5 acres and between 5 acres to 12.5 acres it is 50 percent. So it is not exactly it is 80 percent, it is roughly it, uh, it comes to about 60 to 70 percent because this 80 percent was fixed based on 2010 prices and since the prices have gone up, the actual subsidy will be around uh, between 50 to 60 percent of the uh, 5 acres and beyond 5 acres it can be around 40 percent, 35 to 40 percent. Yeah, oh. we can uh, uh, <laughs> handle all these uh, different types from application, uploading and then uh, the application see now it's called centralized edition computerized so what we do is first we have to apply for subsidy the farmer has to apply that will be uploaded in the website of article department and article department then uh, there will be further kind of issue work order once the work order is issued we install the system and upload the invoice then it is processed and subsidy is given to the farmer so we can help in uh, processing all these applications uh, from the farm. Okay. Uh, we have another question regarding subsidy. Yeah. What is the subsidy available from government and uh, can you handle end-to-end -end process if we choose your system? Yeah, definitely. The rate of subsidy I told you up to 5 years. That has been answered. So we can handle uh, uh, issues, no problem. Okay, and uh, what are the advantages of drip irrigation? Yeah, See, it has been uh, given in the presentation. However, I will briefly I will tell you, uh, we first and foremost is to save water. See, we save water between 30 to 70 percent depending on the spacing of the crop and soil condition and at the same time proportionately this is a power also. We can irrigate more area with a limited water. Then we save lot of labor because we don't have to because weed growth will be very much under control because of the uh, wetting will be only near the root zone of the plant. There will be lot of dry spaces in the field where weed growth will not be there. And we save fertilizer also to the extent of 
60 to 70 percent and uh, <coughs> this uh, healthy uh, plants can be grown under drip irrigation because uh, almost 18 to 20 hours in a day the soil will be, soil will be having optimum moisture which is good for the healthy growth of the plant. That's why the growth uh, will be a little faster than the uh, than in other irrigation systems and then the healthy uh, plants and the crop will be quite uh, good quality of the produce will be good and we set a good price. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ramanath is asking if you can share your uh, PPT to all the attendees. Okay. PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And uh, Mr. Justin has one question. When you say the limit of pi H hectares, is it the land that we only own as a farm or is it the only irrigated area that is counted? No. Eligibility for subsidy they give up to 5 hectares. We can own even 100, 100 hectares. There is no problem. Even then we are eligible for subsidy. But the government will provide subsidy only up to 5 hectares. So that they can cover more farmers with the limited funds available at the disposal of the government. That is the so uh, if you want to cover more than uh, 5 hectares, then you will have to invest uh, or you can avoid bank loan. We, we think, suppose there are many farmers who are having 30 acres, 40 acres, 50 acres, but the documents are in different layers of the family. So in which case, each member of the family can avoid up to 5 hectares. Suppose there are uh, 3 members owning each, uh, say, 4 hectares each. So 12 hectares we can avoid. Okay. Banana plantation, the approximate cost is about 25 to 45 thousand. Okay. Mr. Angana, any any more questions? Okay. Mr. Girish, you can uh, ask any more questions if you have. In Karnataka, we have covered uh, so far 2.5 lakh hectares, but there is still plenty of uh, area to be covered because the total horticulture area in Karnataka is about uh, 20 lakh hectares, that is 2 million hectares. Apart from that, uh, there is uh, sugar cane and cotton and other things which constitute about 5 lakh hectares. We have to cover about 25 lakh hectares under the drip irrigation in Karnataka. Out of which we are so far we have got only 2.5 lakh hectares, that means 10 percent. So this is an indication on all India basis also, so far we have covered out of 30 million hectares of drip irrigation, we have hardly covered about 6 million hectares so far in the last 10-15 years. There is plenty of scope and agriculture sector is using about 75 to 80 percent of the water available. So this area where we can concentrate and conserve it so that it is available for drinking water and non-agricultural purposes in the days to come. So this is the uh, message, that's why we have taken it as a mission, then uh, we are <coughs> working on it and uh, not only for business but we also propagate for conservation of water and all these platforms. Thank you very much.
Okay. Mr. Justin, yeah, you I have any questions? Uh, okay, here yeah, it is. This, uh, yeah, see, on trial basis, deep irrigation has been installed in uh, Paddy, uh, where the water requirement has come down to about 15 percent of the normal. Because even uh, uh, the standing water is not required for paddy cultivation. You must have heard of any method of cultivation of paddy, where if you cultivate paddy like in a dry crop, like ragi or uh, uh, jawar or anything, you keep on irrigating once in a week by flooding or through deep irrigation or filter irrigation, you will still get better quality and better yield than uh, the standing water uh, for the uh, paddy. Okay. So the uh, life of the equipment of uh, irrigation, it uh, depends on the proper maintenance. Anything you buy, even if you buy a bread or anything, unless you maintain it properly, it doesn't give it away. The drip irrigation system, generally, as per the standards which is manufactured, it lasts for about 8 to 10 years. But it needs proper maintenance. When you are doing input cultivation, that the drip lines are to be kept, uh, removed and kept aside and after the input cultivation they have to be delayed. And whenever we are not irrigating during the rainy season, even then if you are not removing the system, at least uh, you irrigate for daily 10 minutes so that uh, no insects and other things uh, should not get into the system and clog the system. So these uh, certain maintenance, uh, uh, if it is done, it will definitely last for 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. The typical maintenance is you have to clean the filter, you have to clean the flush uh, lateral, the flush uh, emitter, and if it is clogged because of the salty water, then you have to do acid treatment so that the clogging is removed. Okay, Varanika has one question. Should be done during the evening or night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Irrigation normally it is done during cooler part of the day so that the uh, losses will be reduced. Even in drip irrigation there will be some operation loss because when you are irrigating uh, some sunlight will be falling. So the severe operation losses can be avoided if you do during cooler part of the day. Maybe up to 10 or 11 in the morning and then after 4 or 5 in the evening. So night irrigation is the best system. Uh, the best period to irrigate through drip or filter. Rate of fertigation. Yeah, see the rate of fertigation. Uh, <coughs> see, for each uh, crop, depending on the soil uh, and water conditions. See, first thing is one should get the soil and water tested for uh, analyzed and water the efficiency. So, depending on that, fertilizer companies they will give the formulation accordingly, it can be. See, the cost of fertilization, fertilizers will not come down compared to what normal uh, uh, granulated fertilizer. But the efficiency of the application of fertilizer will definitely increase. And uh, with the same amount of uh, money you spend for uh, granulated fertilizer, if you apply through drip irrigation system, uh, this liquid fertilizer or uh, soluble fertilizer, you get better yield, better results. And uh, that is the saving. So the, the fertilizer will be applied roughly about 200 to 300 uh, meters uh, per hour to the drip system. So what we do is normally we first complete the irrigation part and before closing down the irrigation, maybe about half an hour or 45 minutes before that, we start applying fertilizer to the drip system. So after application of the drip system, uh, the, the soluble fertilizer or liquid fertilizer will be uh, kept in a drum or a container and the water will be part of the water the irrigation water will be passed through the duct and that will be going along the irrigation water to the tank. So once the drum is empty or the container is empty, then uh, we, see, uh, we say that irrigation uh, fertigation it is over. After that you allow water to flow for another five to ten minutes so that any uh, dissolved salt contents or uh, chemicals in the fertilizer, everything uh, cleaned from the system and uh, there is no clogging. 
so that uh, to be followed. These all these things we uh, train uh, the farmer at the time of inflation. Okay. Mr. Justin Girish Ranganathan, any more question? Okay, I think there are no more questions. Okay, Justin comes. Okay. Would you repeat the fortification rate as a percentage of all the water flow? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the rate of fortification of fertilizer, yeah. So it, it, uh, <coughs> What we do is, suppose the system is uh, to irrigate a particular block in the field for about three hours. So that is the uh, duration required to give sufficient water to the tank. So what we do is first to, uh, two hours we give the irrigation. Then after that we start the fertilization uh, unit that is uh, which is soluble fertilizer or liquid fertilizer kept in a container. We use a venturi system or a fertilizer tank or a fertilizer pump to supply this fertilizer through irrigation water. So there will be 75% or 80 percent flow of water, irrigation water and 20% will just so partially block the main line and uh, it will be made to pass through the fertilization tank or fertilization uh, container. So that uh, fertilizer gets mixed with the irrigation water and it will be applied to the plant. Uh, like this. So this process will take about uh, half an hour to forty five minutes. Then after uh, the application of this fertilizer, we still continue for about 10 minutes for uh, this irrigation so that whatever fertilizer uh, uh, we apply should not uh, remain in the pipeline. So it should be flushed out. Otherwise it will create clogging. Next again we have to apply another acid to clean that. So if we do that, uh, the application, the duration of application of fertilizer will be about half an hour to 45 minutes and uh, irrigation uh, time will be uh, about uh, 3 hours. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Varunika has one question. Is your company into irrigation consultancy or you also? You, all, you are also the dealers of a few companies manufacturing within the irrigation system. No, we are a manufacturer of uh, irrigation systems and we are registered with the uh, government of India as a state government to, to supply the irrigation equipment to farmers and the fertility team. The consultancy means we don't just give the consultancy. We prepare the project report, right? From, uh, we suppose a farmer is interested in installing the irrigation system, we visit the field we collect all the data required, we design the system, we supply the system and install it and train the operator or the farmer uh, in operation and maintenance of the system. This is total turnkey project we undertake. Okay. And we have a dealer network, if it is a small area, dealers will be able to undertake and if it is big area, we also will do it. Okay. And, uh, what are the prime factors to be considered by the buyer when deciding the irrigation system? See, first, you should look for the quality. See, whatever he buys, whether it is irrigation system or car or anything, he should get justice for his money. Because in, especially in big irrigation systems, there are so many manufacturers who supply curious materials like uh, recycled plastic and other things. So the cost may be less initial cost, but the life will not be there. There are many instances where the uh, drip irrigation systems have failed in 6 to 10 months or one, one year or less than 2 years, whereas the actual life is about uh, 8 to 10 years, because they have just seen the cost of the system, not the uh, quality of the system. So quality is first quality, second the reputation of the company, third the, their after sale service. 
So these three are factors. Quality means I am not talking only about the product quality, the design quality, installation quality, and after sales quality. All the three, because we have to supply good quality material. There should be good design. Because we should uh, water application should be uniform throughout the field. The variation cannot exceed more than 10 percent. Then it defeats the purpose of irrigation. So that is the uh, main factor. So technology is involved, quality product is involved, quality of inflation is involved, quality of the is involved. So you all these four uh, things we have to consider. Not only cost of the system. This company may give for 10,000 per acre, but uh, one company may give about 12,000 per acre. So we have to then we have to see why uh, putting 12,000. Maybe because of the quality and service. So 10,000 maybe he may just supply the material and forget. He will not be he will not be able to give a good design. He will not be able to give a good service and good product. This okay. latest technology uh, that is the uh, design has come that is for uh, uh, more crops then uh, <coughs> mist irrigation has come, micro sprinklers have come, uh, then subsurface uh, is coming but uh, still it, is to, it has to prove in the field because uh, we hear that there are some root intrusion into the system because of the moisture in that particular place. So that we have to observe and see. Okay. So we recommend uh, uh, surface irrigation system instead of uh, subsurface because that is not a proof. We have to see the performance. Maybe after another four or five years, that may be uh, uh, better suited. But the cost will be at least about 20 to 25 percent uh, more than the surface irrigation system because we have to use EC non drain dripper in subsurface so that uh, the water and soil doesn't get into the, uh, the uh, roots and uh, soil doesn't get into the piping so we have to use pressure compensated non drain dripper and also we have to use uh, truffle treatment quite frequently uh, I think that chemical is banned and uh, we have to see. Okay. Okay, we have another question. A few manufacturers are trying to create the sprinkler which can be operated through the regular mobile. What are your opinions yeah, on that is, system? Uh, yeah, yeah. See, this uh, mobile, uh, then it is uh, interlinked with a switch, uh, with the starter of the motor, uh, mobile motor. So, as and when the power uh, goes off, it gives a signal we can switch off. As and when the power, uh, power comes, it gives a signal to the mobile and we can switch on by sitting at home. So that is the system. So I think it costs about six to seven thousand rupees. Uh, whether it is filter or drip irrigation, we uh, can use that uh, equipment uh, which will be uh, connected to your mobile. It gives the signal and we can uh, wherever we are there we can just switch on. That is the system. Okay. Justin, Girish, you have any more questions? Okay, I think no more questions. Okay, before uh, we end, uh, end uh, you can continue this discussion in the forum also. I am pasting the link, you can visit this link. And uh, you can continue the discussion and you can ask your, uh, in, for, if you have any for, for, for further more questions, you can continue here. And uh, before I end this, end this meeting, I would like to have a feedback on today's talk. Please uh, visit this link. It will take just a minute to fill up the form. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, we are willing to you know, help any farmer who comes, uh, wants to install drip irrigation system. We give all technical uh, support, technical guidance, and also good quality material and service. We also help them 
in getting this up to do the job. Uh, thank you, Mr. Murthinger. Thank, thank you. you for attending today's thank webinar. You. This is an event organized by agriculturemission.com. Please visit our webinar section for updates on forthcoming events. I'm closing this meeting now. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Thank <laughs> you.